and never fail, will never lose. With God is our source. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I just have to share with you in our uh, pastor meeting on Tuesday. And usually we have discussions about different needs and whatever that we need to talk about. And we go in prayer. And sometimes, sometimes it's just spontaneous. I mean, we all just start praying at the same time. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's powerful. And there's other times where we, we just we just feel the, the presence of the Lord and we just wait for the Lord and we, we take turns praying. And so it, it, Tuesday morning, it was one of those mornings where we took turns praying. And, and, and Pastor Jay started off and he was praying for the group that's still in Mexico. And he said these words. He said, he said, Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll send the hosts of angels with them to protect them and bless them. And the meeting said, the Holy Ghost, it's just ruined my spirit. And, he's, and, and, and heaven responded instantly. And God said, I've already said the angels are waiting up at the border. To usher them in, to usher them out. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go anywhere and do anything without Jesus. Hallelujah. I remember the very first time when I was stationed down on the Angeles Forest in Southern California, there was 11 families that used to go to Baja every year for Easter for a week. And my first trip to Tijuana was something. I was pulling a, like a 20-foot camp trailer. And I locked up my brakes five or six times to keep somebody from hitting me. Because they'll hit you on purpose. Because you've got insurance. <laughs> See, they want, they want a better car. So they'll hit you on purpose. But thank God the angels were waiting on me to board to escort them in and escort them back. Hallelujah. And we just had a good time. Because when you hear from the Lord, you always have a good time. Amen. Praise the Lord. I have a message tonight that's going to address some things. It's entitled, When You Get No Answer. And I want you to, if you want to take some notes, I'm going to give you several scriptures here. But you see, there are times when we pray and we don't get an answer. I have two brothers that are not serving the Lord. And I've been praying for them for over 50 years. And I can remember back in my early 30s, and again about 40s, mid-40s, I was praying for my brothers that they would find Jesus. That they would come to salvation, come to know the Lord as their Savior. And I, I, I did an Old Testament thing. I laid out a fleece for them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I laid out a fleece for them for, that they would come to God. And I was, I was fasting, and I was praying. And I named their names before the Lord. I said, Lord, I know you can save them. I know you have a plan for them. I know this. I'm leading you to save them. And God spoke to me. And he says, don't worry. I'm working it. I'm working it. So I want you to get that tonight. When you pray and you don't get an answer, just know that God is still God. Yes, He is. He's still true to His word. He's still all-powerful. And he's working. Come on, sir. Say working it. Working. He's working it. How many here tonight have prayers now that you can pray that haven't been answered yet? I got some. We got unsaved children right here in town. Yeah. See? But we have to know that God hasn't changed. He has heard our prayer. And he's working it. So I want to share some scripture with you tonight. Then we'll get on into the message here. Proverbs 1, 20 through 33. I want you to pay particular attention to verse 28 as we read through this. Go ahead.
See, the, the scene here is this. The people are worshiping idols. The people are worshiping their religious things. They're worshiping ceremonial things. They're doing all kinds of things that in the eyes of God is sin. So it's saying to them, as long as you carry this on, I will not hear your prayer. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Now one, probably the worst place that a human being could be in is to be totally unsaved and headed for hell. But second to that is a person thinking they're a Christian and going to heaven and they got willful sin going on in their life and God will not hear their prayer. See, the, the only prayer that God will hear in that circumstance is a prayer of repentance. Amen. But I've known people that have prayed earnestly about something and they didn't get an answer when they thought they should or they didn't like the answer and they completely fell away from God and says, he's, he's not God, he has no power, and it just, just went off on God. See, when God wants us to understand his ways are above our ways, his thoughts are above our thoughts, he is all powerful, he's still God, he's the creator, he can do all things, and he's got a plan, and he's working it. Amen. Hallelujah. He's working it. So, when we pray, we don't get our prayer answered. First and foremost, we need to check ourselves and see if there's willful, habitual sin going in our life because that will block our blessings and God will not hear our prayers. Amen. It's an awful place to be. Yes. Okay. Yes.
know that you know. That's where you need to be. See, but when you look at this, I will not hear you. Now, a lot of people take that scripture where it says, well, God hears and answers my every prayer. But they forgot to add the condition of that. The condition is if you live right. Amen. If you're living right, he will hear and answer your every prayer. He will answer your prayer in his own way and his own time. I, I, I knew a guy one time that, that uh, he was a logger. His wife prayed for him for, I don't know how many years, three or four decades at least. He was a good guy, but he wasn't saved. And she prayed for him for over 40 years. And finally, finally, he came to Jesus. Now, we don't, we don't understand everything that God does or everything that he thinks. We don't understand his ways. But here's what he's trying to say to us. If you'll just trust me, come on somebody. If you'll just trust me unconditionally, leave it to me, give it to me, and expect I'll take care of business. I'm working it. You know what? And that's good enough for me. My prayers that I've prayed that haven't been answered, I can go to bed at night with confidence because I know God is working it to my good. Amen. Romans 8, 28, God works all things together for the good of those who love the Lord and those who call for your purposes. Yes. There's a condition. If you're living right. Amen. See? It just doesn't work unless we're living right. Uh, Jeremiah 2, 13 through 16. I'm sorry, 7, I think it was like my eyes were good or something. Jeremiah 7, 13 through 16.
See, so these these fifty plus years that I've been praying for my two brothers to be saved, God said to me, "I got it. I'm working. That's good enough for me." <laughs> you know, I, I wish they'd have been saved over forty years ago so they could live in His blessings. But their time has come. <coughs> you see, what He's doing, He's waiting on circumstances to change their mind. Amen. Sometimes it takes circumstances. Sometimes it takes calamity. Sometimes it takes poverty. Sometimes it takes good or bad before we will turn our minds to Christ and certain people call upon Him. You know, you've all heard about deathbed salvations. There, there are so many people that will go through life doing what they want to do, being what they want to be, but when it gets down to the last moment, the last breath, and they're facing eternity, they call on Jesus. Amen. See, now, that, that's hard to understand sometimes because, you know, if, if we could just get across to people the goodness of God, the good things of God, why would anybody not want to serve the Lord? I mean, come on. See, they just don't know. They don't know. See, they don't realize that the, the things are cutting off their life. So anyway, the summation here, if you look at these, in, in a couple of places he's talking to the nation, in other places he's talking just a group of people. But he said the same message. When you have things in your life that I call sin, I'm not going to hear that. That's pretty plain. See? But the only prayer he will hear is a prayer for peace. Amen. That's why even when you think you've done good for this day. Repent every day. Amen. Repent every day. I try every time before I ask God for something. I say, God, if there's anything in my life, anything in my life that's just pleasing to you, take it from me, forgive me, wash me clean with your red blood and make me white as a driven stone. Hallelujah. Amen. Then I can ask you for something. And expect it. See, because when, when, when sin is blocking our lives, God does not obligate himself to do it favors. But when you're in right standing with Him, then He's obligated by His own word, He's obligated to bless you. Amen. He's obligated to take care of you. You see, that's the deal. Lucille, <laughs> that's the deal. See, He obligates Himself to His own word. So when we're living right, He's bound by His own word to keep us. He's bound by His own word to bless us. He's bound by His own word to protect us. He's bound by His own word to heal us. And that's what's important about this scripture we've shared. See, we should never get caught up in routine. We should never get caught up in, in the ritualistic things we saw here. In, in, the, in, the, in the stuff, minutia, the stuff that people get caught up in, it's absolutely amazing. And they call it Christianity. They call it church. But it's far from it. See? So we as individuals and as a church, as Harvest Fellowship, to, to go forward and do the things that God has, has called us to do and do the things that He's putting on the hearts of our leadership to go forward and do things. We need to be a part of that. We need to be on board. But before we can be on board, we're going to be living right. Amen. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Matthew 21 and 22 says, In all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believe me, you shall receive. Condition, if you're living right. Now let me read that again. There's, there's a couple of words that catch on. And all things, I just don't tell you, that's the problem. And all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believe me, you shall receive. If you're Romans 8, 28, all things were given, as I just refer to the it's, it's, it's God's word, folks, and it's a true word. But to make it applicable to your life, we got to be living right. Remember the song we used to sing when we were kids in, in Sunday school? Be careful little eyes what you see. Be careful little ears what you hear. Be careful little feet where you go. You know that song? We need to be reminded of the basics sometimes. Be careful what you think. See, don't let the devil don't let the devil dump his garbage in your mind. It's not a garbage dump. Amen. It's designed for the word of God. It's 
designed for truth, it's designed for faith. Amen. So, I, I like the idea that God sets before us. You see, he, he, he's bound by his own contract, which is his word. To bless us, heal us, keep us, to provide for us, to keep us working.
isn't it amazing how many times we pray for something and we fix in our mind, well, it's going to happen this way and it's going to happen on this day. And here comes God in left field. He does it this way and this day. He just blows us away. <laughs> because he's a forward-looking God. He's a visionary. He knows the future. He holds it in his hands. So we can trust him. Amen. We can trust him with our life. We have no, if you're living right for God, you're serving the very best you can. You have absolutely nothing to worry about. Amen. Nothing. Because God said so. Hallelujah. We can stand on His Word. Amen. We can stand on His Word. So I want to encourage you. At least as a daily routine, just 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 approach the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, you know, if there's anything that's going on in my life that's displeasing you, if, it, if I've done anything today that didn't reflect you, then forgive me of it. Wash me clean. Oh, it feels good to be clean. Amen. It's one thing to be clean in our body, but it's another thing to be clean in our spirit. To be clean before Jesus. Then we know that the, 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 the gates of heaven, the windows of heaven are wide open and his blessings are coming our way. Amen. Did you know that your every day of your life has already been discussed in heaven, in the throne room, and a decision's been made? Remember the little story about Jacob's ladder? Everybody? Angels ascending and descending. Well, what are they doing? They're taking your prayers to heaven and bringing back the answer. What are they bringing back? What God said. They're bringing back what God said. So if you can visualize today, heaven is a busy place. But if you can visualize it, multitude of angels to heaven, back. They're taking your needs. God hears them. But that's the ministry of the angels. They're taking your re re request. They're taking your prayer to the presence of God Almighty and bringing back the answer. Oh, you know, I remember when I, when I was like 8, 19 years old, I was up until about 15 or 16, I just loved to read every book about the frontier that I could get my hands on. I, I would like to be the first white man in West Mississippi. I'd have the biggest ranch in the country. But I, I read those books and I, 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 I think about, you know, the, the, the adventure we have with God is even more exciting than they had when they started to discover the West. The, the adventure in God is just absolutely going to blow your mind because it's awesome. We can, we can pursue heaven. We can pursue God, we can pursue His kingdom. We can pursue all He has. And we can have it in this life. There are preachers and teachers that say, well, when you get to heaven, you'll have all this stuff, you'll have all this stuff. Wait a minute, wait. Every saved person is a part of the kingdom of God. Right here. Amen. And we can receive all that God has for us right here. We don't have to wait until we get to heaven. Heaven's going to be a great place. And I hope we all make it and take as many as we can with us. And I'm looking forward to it. Beat me up on any time. See, but the thing is, we can have the fullness of God in this life now. All of His blessings. All of heaven. There's a song that talks about heaven coming down. I don't remember all the words to it, but it's powerful. See, and do you know where heaven is? It's not only on the planet in heaven, but it's in your heart. Heaven's right there. It's right there. How can I say that? Because Jesus is right there. And Jesus is there. He can give you all the joys, all the blessings that this human body can stand.
you straighten the crooked places. I go before you and lift the way smooth. It still was straight and narrow, but he'll go before you and straighten up the crooked places. And make it smooth. See? Now, does that mean you're going to be a millionaire? No. It doesn't mean you're going to be a millionaire here. But in the spirit, we're all millionaires. <laughs> Just soak it up. You got it. See? But what I want to get across is that God is wanting so much to impart into the believer the fullness of what he has promised for these last days. And I don't know about you, but I want to be a, a willing vessel, totally available. And I said, Lord, just dump it on me. Spill it out. Because I want to be a part of this last day thing. When I was telling you about reading the frontier books, I always thought, well, I, I would like to have been born 100 years ago and live to be 100 years ago and be with the Lord. But you know what? When I think about it, that would have been fun. But this is going to be funner. <laughs> see, because we're going to see the greatest <coughs> things of God that man has never seen or heard or heard in these last days. We're going to see it. We're going to be a part of it. Amen. We're going to be a part of it. If we're living right. Like if we're living right. Like That's the key. So let me ask you, let us all stand. Thank you. 